The best way I can explain Barotrauma to you is that it's the type of game where it feels like nothing's happening and then in the blink of an eye, everything is just gone to hell. It's true when they say that in Barotrauma, danger doesn't announce itself. We'll just be doing our submarine chores, minding our own business, but then one of us will ask if the other hears something coming from outside. Oh my god, I feel like I hear like a, a, a thing. Right before whatever it was, tears a massive breach in our hole. Oh my god, oh my god. I don't know what's happening. What the hell happened? Oh my god. Whether it's suffocating in the middle of a room because I misclicked my oxygen mask, or being eaten by whatever horrors are looking outside, we've yet to run out of hilarious ways to kill ourselves in Barotrauma Dick Night. Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. <laughs> Some games it seems like the most fun we have is when neither of us have a clue what's going on. I don't think we're gonna long, be, live long enough to need a uh, doctor, so I'll be I'm the mechanic. Gonna, I'll be the engineer. We embrace this philosophy of our maiden voyage in Barrow Trauma and completely skip the tutorial section. Yeah, that ended up being a huge mistake. The good news is, even after going through all five tutorial levels, we were just as inept as we were when we started. The only difference being, we had a better idea of why. This could only go badly. This could only go... <laughs> down technically right oh because we're in a sub <laughs> oh it's all God. down from here when we aren't screwing around comparing the way our characters move to quap we actually do a pretty decent job at running the sub the catch being that as soon as something goes wrong the problems begin to snowball i've always been able to rely on him to remain calm in the middle of a crisis i don't know how he does it but he performs really well under pressure where were all the suits? For me, it's another story. It's dark, there are monsters, and it seems like no matter how many times I fix things, they always end up broken again. Between all the red lights and holes torn in our sub, the anxiety creeps up on me and my heart starts pumping faster. It must be nice to be him and just sit in the other room playing the harmonica. Yeah, guitar you're solo. jamming out. Now you're getting into it. Woo! Oh my god! <laughs> when we started out, we just had a crew of the two of us because it was difficult enough having one girlfriend to order around. This meant that we had to split all five jobs between the two of us. So not only was I the crew's medic, but I also was on turret duty when a fish attacked. I can handle multitasking in some situations, but a sinking ship isn't one of them. In reality, it ended up being more like we each had to do all five jobs because our coordination was such a complete mess. We had no idea where things were, trying to tell the other person where to go ended up being more work than just doing it on our own, and on top of all of that, usually one of us was on the floor incapacitated. Okay, I really need a medic. You were the medic! <laughs> After our first couple missions, we came to the conclusion that I wasn't allowed to steer the sub anymore. Look at me, sure. I'm the captain now. It's not that I don't know how, but I'm just so damn impatient. We'll just ricochet from a high velocity in one direction to another, hitting things left and right. So instead, I let my boyfriend be the captain so we can get a little more attached to our ship before the inevitable crash. It does come at the cost of having orders thrown at me left and right while he sits in the comfort of the command center. Okay, yeah, so don't open this door because I don't want to get wet. I can't handle leaving the ship. It's horrifying how small I am compared to the ship. And it's even scarier how small the ship is compared to the ocean. If you're not careful, you might find yourself floating in the endless abyss with no idea which way you came from anymore. I won't let the sub out of my sight, but my boyfriend treats it like it's a vacation. <laughs> Woohoo! He'll go out for a swim, and it won't even phase him that he can't see past two feet in front of him. Unless we're docked at a station, it'll take a lot of convincing to get me to leave this ride. I'm doing my uh, hamstring stretch. Oh my god! For all the times he risks his life in stupid ways, it seems like it's always me that ends up incapacitated first. He's been out in the open water with these Cthulhu monsters, swimming around, and he'll come back aboard completely unscathed. Meanwhile, I'll drop dead in the middle of the room because I had no idea that that beeping meant my suit was low on oxygen. Come on, Tarny. <laughs> Pull through. I'm trying! What the hell happened? I can't even be upset about it though. When you're dead, you get a nice bird's eye view of all the barrow drama. And boy, is it a fun time. Watching him scramble to try and salvage our mess of a mission on his own is its own form of entertainment. I would just like what to you know that you're gonna be about? there for me in a time of crisis. Like, like if we were on a plane and it was going down and I was passed out and they said, everybody needs to put on their oxygen mask. I would like to know that you were gonna put mine on before you put on your own, you know? Why well, wouldn't? And the FAA wouldn't want me to do it either. I'm not. Okay, I'm gonna take you outside as bait. Oh, okay. good idea, good idea. 
come with me. It doesn't help matters much that whenever we play anything slightly nautical, my boyfriend slips into his classic roleplay and ends up somewhere between a salty scallywag and a commercial airline pilot. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is your captain speaking. If you direct your attention to the overhead compartment, you will see that the fasten seatbelt sign is on. We are expecting some minor turbulence as we come into dock here. Sometimes when I'm scared shitless, I wish he could just find it in his heart to break character for a minute and tell me it's gonna be okay. But it's safe to say things would be 10 times worse if we were both screaming while the ship went down. So I appreciate his ability to lighten the mood up a bit. Oh my god, there's three of them in here and there's an even bigger thing attacking. <laughs> this is so scary. Because of the way cyclones work, we can't always see what's going on with each other at all times. It's not uncommon that I'll open up a hatch door and be extremely confused at what's going on. In the same vein, it's nice that he doesn't catch all the fires or start, because he'd probably ditch me for a slightly less flammable girlfriend. Okay, I need help. Okay, where are you? <laughs> what just happened? When you hold spacebar, you go completely limp. And although it got some laughs out of us the first time we tried jumping, it quickly became one of our most useful tools. As much as I wish I could just go limp every time I don't know what to do in real life, I think we're not that far off to begin with. It's especially funny when I'm carrying something heavy and I just keel over and let him drag me back to safety. Solve that problem. It's a real challenge to complete even a single mission for us because we're still very new to the game. Even still, it's such a rush when we do manage to make it out in one piece and collect some booty. It's usually a coin toss when we go to explore a wreck, but there will just end up becoming a part of it. I wouldn't change a thing about it. I can see where the trauma comes from in Barrow Trauma. As many shocking things as there are in this game, I think the biggest realization of all for me was how desensitized my boyfriend is to fear and horror. I don't know what's scarier, having my insides ripped apart by giant shrimp babies or the fact that he's sitting there in hysterics while it's happening. As it turns out, the real monsters were on the inside of the sub all along. Ow!